Hey guys, welcome back. In last lecture, we discussed about what is recursion, how recursion works. In this lecture, let's talk a bit about how we can identify if a problem can be solved using recursion or not. And in this order, we will also try out identifying some problems if they can be solved using recursion. This identification activity will actually be helpful when you will practically deal with recursive problems. So the two things that we need to know if a problem is recursive. First one, problem will always be breakable into subproblems. Exactly identical to the original problem, but smaller than the original problem. And second, there will always be a base case. Let's try out these two points to identify if a problem can be solved recursively. We will take example with different data types to develop a light idea on how to divide the task if you get a specific type of structure to solve in front of you so that you can think on how to divide the problem correctly. So first we are taking an example of calculating the sum of first n natural numbers. So let's say the value of n given is 7 and the sum of first 7 natural numbers is 28, right? Which is also equal to the sum of first 6 natural numbers and the current value of n, 7. So we can call the same method to calculate the sum of first 6 natural numbers. Now 6 can again delegate the task of calculating the sum till 5 to the same method in recursion. This will go up to 1. And now 1 is a base condition. If n becomes 1, we will return 1. So yes, this can be solved using recursion, where at each step the value of n is decreasing. So this is how we broke the task, where the smallest subtask is n equals to 1. And here you can see all the tasks from the smallest to the biggest. Now let's see the next case. For a given array A of integers, compute the sum of the elements in this array. This is almost same as the previous one. The only difference is that the type is an array. So first you will only deal with the nth input, that is the current input, as everything will be solved by recursive course. This will keep on going until the base case. And finally we reach to the base case. And the base case is when we reach to the 0th index. So if we reach to the 0th index, return 0, else keep on adding the current element to the sum till n minus 1th element. So here we are dealing with complete array, not with a single number. So how did we divide it? The smallest subtask was array with a single element. And this increases. So the value of n from the original task, which is the largest array with n elements towards the smallest or the base task is decreasing. So let's go ahead with another example, example of again a different type. This time you're taking string. So how we can break it or how we can solve it? We can take the responsibility to concat the last letter and for remaining string we can call the method recursively. This will do the job for us. And when we have no more words left, that is, the string becomes empty, in this case, we will return back the empty string as we're not going to do anything with it. We will just stop the recursion. So this is how we broke it up. Initially, it had the complete length, then it decreases by n minus 1 till the base case. Now, next example, Next is not a problem statement in particular, but it's a binary tree and we're going to talk about how to divide a problem into subtasks if the problem is completely about a binary tree. If you see binary tree object itself is a recursive object or itself a recursive structure. And while breaking up your problem into subproblems, you must remember this point. Always look at like a recursive structure. How it is a recursive structure? This tree itself visually have repetitive structure. If you look at the root node, it is further having left tree and a right tree. 
and again if you see its left child which itself is a node again it's having left child and right child or left tree or right tree so at all the nodes the structure is same each of its part is identical to the entire object so it's a recursive structure so when you solve problems for such structure you don't have to think much about how to break it up it is already visible because what you will do for the smallest part will be exactly same to what you will do for the entire object. And if there are no more nodes attached to a node, then we should stop. And this will be the base condition. So this is how you can approach problems with binary trees. Further in this section, we have taken an example of binary tree to understand this whole thing. But in this lecture, we are not going to code anything because this lecture was only about how should we think of breaking a task into subtasks? So this lecture along with the identification was mainly about how do we break the problems. This was all about this lecture. See you guys in next lecture.